Welcome to LearnHealthTech.com. Hi, this is Dave, and this is my second video to help you learn HL7. From my first video, we learned that HL7 is a messaging protocol that makes it possible for different healthcare systems to share data with each other. In this video, we're going to look at a little more about some of the rules of the road for interfaces, then look at a sample HL7 message and break it down in a way that'll make it easy to learn because if I can do it, you can too. So from the first video, we learned that HL7 messages are readable in a text format. Messages are created by an interface when a system or a person on a system performs some function such as checking in a patient or placing an order for a lab test. Anything that is done to create an interface message is called a trigger event. Before we go on, we need to understand that there are many different interfaces and thus different interface messages. Let's say a hospital needs to send a lab result from a lab system to a physician's clinical system to be reviewed. However, what if that physician's clinical system doesn't even have the patient record to begin with? You can't send a lab result on a patient that is not in the doctor's system. In order for all of this to work, we need more than one interface. So the first interface and the first interface message type that we'll talk about is an ADT message. ADT stands for Admission, Discharge, and Transfer. It's pretty straightforward that an ADT message only covers data pertaining to the patient themselves. A lab message won't be transmitted by an ADT interface. So here is our ADT message. The first thing to know about HL7 is that it's comprised of messages that contain segments and the segments contain components and then the components contain the actual data. There are also subcomponents which further break down the data in the field but most of the time you won't have to interpret anything beyond the component level. The components are all separated by pipes which have two purposes. One is to tell the interface how to parse out the data so it can be transmitted and inserted into databases and other programs. And two, it provides us a way to easily read the messages. When I look at an HL7 message, one of the first things that my eyes automatically go to are the segment headers. Now the segment headers are these three letter identifiers at the beginning of each segment that define what kind of data is contained in the given segment. Those three letter abbreviations are quite easy to understand. Let's look at the first one. The MSH segment is the message header segment. It's like the DNA of the entire message. It defines things like what kind of message it is, when it was sent, what kind of system is sending it. Before we can go on, we need to understand a concept that we call counting pipes. This is simply the exercise of starting at the beginning and counting which component we're on. For the MSH segment, we count the header and continue on with the other components, referring to them as MSH1, MSH2, and so on. Accepted convention is to use the semicolon like you see here. Now you don't have to memorize what each and every component is for each and every message type if you have a good reference guide. Go to learnhealthtech.com slash interfaces for some links to reference materials. So back to our message. Looking at the data in the MSH segment, you can probably guess what some of the data is. This component is very important in that it tells the interface exactly what the delimiters mean for the message and how the interface is to interpret what the delimiters do. The field separator is the pipe. The component separator is the up caret. The field repetition separator is the tilde and the escape character is the backslash and the subcomponent character the ampersand. Now this is a little confusing at first but you should know that this is the standard that I'm displaying here on the screen for almost all interface messages and when you're first learning it won't make a huge difference in how you read the messages. The main thing you do need to be aware of though 
is the pipe which separates the components. The next really important thing we'll look at is the message type. This tells the receiving system what kind of interface this is, followed by a caret, and then the message type for that particular message. This is MSH9. So this is an ADT interface message with a transaction type of A01. Now I'm sure you're asking what an A01 is. Remember that I said that reference material has all the message types and as you learn HL7 you'll memorize many of them. But anyway, an A01 is an admission, just that. The patient is being admitted to the hospital and placed in a bed. When he's discharged, an ADT A03 will be processed. There are messages for everything. Bed changes, transfer to another hospital unit, transfer from the ER to the bed, and on and on. And this is just ADT messages. There are ORD messages for orders, ORU for results, and a whole lot of others. So every HL7 message has an MSH segment. When a segment has no more data, the unused components are either filled in by the interface with empty pipes or not. Some interfaces expect a certain minimum number of pipes regardless of how much real data is or is not present. Next, let's look at the PID or the PID segment. You might guess that it stands for Patient ID. This segment contains all the vital information about the patient. So now let's look at PID 5. You can see that this is the patient name, but first name, last name, and middle initial are separated by an up caret symbol. That's how we call out subcomponents, and the documentation rule for this is segment header, colon, component number, a dot, then subcomponent. So last name of Simpson is PID 5.1, and first name of Homer is PID 5.2. Now, for the rest of the segments, I won't dig as deep into each component, but I'll tell you what the segments are in this message. PV1, information about a specific patient visit. PV2, more information about the visit that was not contained in PV1. NK1 is next of kin. So now you know a little about how to read HL7 messages. Your homework is to go to Learn Health tech.com slash interfaces and look at some of the other messages that I've posted. Thank you so much for watching.